Have you ever wondered that whenever you create any component in Angular using CLI, there is one method that comes by default and that is ng on init along with the constructor function. So here this ng on init is one of the method of Angular lifecycle hook and this is what we are going to learn in today's session. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Nisha Singha and in today's session we are going to talk about lifecycle hooks in Angular. So now let's start with the session and talk about what is lifecycle hook and how it is useful in Angular and how we can implement the same in our project. So first we need to understand like what is lifecycle hook and how we can relate it to a real life example. Like we human have a life cycle right from birth till the time we dead. Similarly, every component and directives in Angular also has a life cycle. So we have worked with components and directives in Angular quite a lot now, right? So now when dealing with components or directives, there is a sequence of steps that are performed to build an Angular application from its initialization to its destruction. So Angular component go through different phases, the time we create any component till the time that component destroy. So to have a view of all these occurrences and respond to these moment, Angular provides lifecycle hook which gives us the visibility into these phases. So lifecycle hook in simple way we can say that these are some specific functions that we can call during a specific point of a life of a component in their Angular application. And these are some special functions which we don't need to call externally it calls automatically now once we understood what is lifecycle hooks next point is we need to understand that how we can implement that so these lifecycle hooks can be implemented by interfaces provided in angular core library as you can see here this ng on in it as i told you it's one of the lifecycle method so to implement this lifecycle hook we have one interface on in it Every interface contains different lifecycle hook method named with interface and prefix with ng. So our interface name is on init. So its lifecycle hook method will be on init prefix with ng. So to implement any lifecycle hook, there is a dedicated interface that we need to implement. So that interface will give a specific method that we need to implement. So now let's talk about what are the different lifecycle hooks that we have in Angular. So Angular basically offer eight lifecycle hooks and out of these eight lifecycle hooks, all lifecycle hooks you will not see in day to day or in all component, right? Like ng on changes, ng on init and ng on destroy something which you will use frequently. But like if I talk about ng after content in it checked or ng after view in it, these are some lifecycle hook which you will not see very frequently. Depending on the requirement, we need to use this lifecycle hook. But it's always good to know about what are the different types of hooks we have in Angular and which lifecycle hook is can be used for specific purpose. Okay. So this diagram is very useful to keep a track what all lifecycle hooks we have in Angular and in which sequence it execute. So constructor I have mentioned here, it's not a part of lifecycle hook I will say, but it is very important to understand as it is a part of component. So whenever we discuss about lifecycle hook, we always discuss constructor because we need to be very clear where to use constructor. Whenever any component run, it always call constructor, then it moves to ng on changes. ng on changes is basically to handle any data bound properties. ng on init is a lifecycle hook which is very frequently used and it used to handle any data initialization part that you have in your component. So to initialize any property in your component, we use ng on init. ng do check is basically to handle your own change detection. So if you want to handle, uh, detect or act upon changes that Angular can't or don't detect on its own, so you can handle it on your own in the ng do check. ng after content in it uh, is we have already discussed in one of the video where I have explained about content child and content children decorator. So ng after content in it lifecycle hook respond after Angular project any external content. 
that we have discussed about the content children and content child, right? NG after content checked is basically respond after Angular check the content projected into the component. This lifecycle hook respond after Angular initialize the components view and child view. And now when we talk about ng after view check, this lifecycle hook respond after Angular checks the components view and child view. So these lifecycle hooks are something related to the Angular projected content and the components view part. It will make more sense when I will show you the demo, but on a very high level, it is something related to the view and the projected content. And at the end, ng on destroy, um, this lifecycle hook is also very important. ng on destroy is something which call when the component get destroyed, then this hook will call. So any cleanup task, if you want to do in this lifecycle hook, we can do that. So this is a very high level overview of lifecycle hook. Remember these names and the sequence. Now we will learn it one by one. If I will cover all the lifecycle hook in single video, it would be a very lengthy video. So I will divide this lifecycle hook into different sections. So I will first talk about constructor and ng on in it in this video. And the rest of the lifecycle hook I will cover in the next video. Now let's talk about constructor and ng on in it. So when we talk about constructor, a constructor is a special method that will be called whenever we create new object. And the people who are coming from object oriented background, they have already used constructor, right? Every class has a constructor. So this is a feature of our class or you can say this is a feature of TypeScript itself. It's an object oriented design concept. So constructor is basically used to initialize the class member that we know, fine. But when we talk about Angular component, we don't use constructor for any initialization purpose. We use constructor to inject dependency. That's why I have written here DI, dependency injection. So Angular always execute the constructor method first, then all lifecycle hook will come into the picture. That's why it's very important to talk about constructor when we talk about lifecycle hook. All dependency injection will come into the constructor then where we will put all the class member initialization right so there we have ng on in it so this lifecycle hook is the most usable hook as we can initialize all the method and variable here so when we need to initialize any member any method where we can have the logic to getting initial data for a component then we can use ng on in it to call this method. This lifecycle hook will implement after all data bound properties to get call. So we'll, we will have all properties to use initially. Basically this lifecycle hook will call once and after ng on changes call initially. So you just need to remember that ng on in it will only call once. Now most of the time uh, it's a very common question like what's the difference between constructor and ng on in it. So probably you will wonder why place initialization logic inside ng on in it when you can do that in the class constructor see basically the constructor is best left to be used for dependency injection and our initialization logic should be a part of ng on in it when we talk about angular this is because the javascript engine is what handle the constructor not angular right because constructor is a part of a typescript concept not the angular and this is one of the reason why ng on init hook was created which is called by angular and become a part of component lifecycle that is managed by it. Also of course due to the fact that you can't access any component input properties on the constructor. We cannot do that right. So mostly we use ng on init for all the initialization part and avoid doing any such logic in the constructor. The constructor should be very clean and should be dedicatedly used to perform any dependency injection. So you should use constructor to set up dependency injection and ng on in it is a better place to start where the component bindings are resolved. Now as we understood the high level difference on constructor and ng on in it and we have used this a lot right. As you can see constructor and ng on in it is something which comes by default as soon as we create any constructor using CLI. Now let me do simple console.log here. And I can also console log something here just to show you a very basic sequence. 
keep your developer tool open and move to the console tab and can you see here as soon as my hook route will execute it will first call constructor call and then ng on in it now as i told you that constructor should be only used for any dependency injection so if i show you one of my uh, previous component you can see here that we have one users component and it also has constructor and ng on in it so this constructor is using one service that is user service so user service will act as a dependency for my users component so to implement or to inject this service into this component we have a concept of dependency injection that we need to use in the constructor so as you can see here in the constructor we have injected user service as this object and now we can use this user service object in my component so constructor is basically used for dependency injection so if you have to inject any service any directive anything you need to use in this way and ng on in it on the other hand is used to handle any initialization logic so i have one users variable i want to initialize my users variable with the data that is coming from this service so i'm just handling that logic in the ng on in it so this is the major difference between ng on in it and constructor so as soon as your component will invoke it will first make a call to the constructor and if there is no ng on changes then it will call ng on in it and this life cycle hook is only called once so all initialization part should be handled here so this is about life cycle hook and uh, how we can use constructor and ng on in it life cycle hook so in the next video i will talk about the other life cycle hook method so this is all for today i hope the concept of life cycle hook is clear and it will be more clear once you will see the implementation of all the life cycle hook in the next video so stay connected and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any other updates see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye